Hi again my dear thinkers! Welcome back to my channel! Since critical thinking is a vital skill for us to be able to connect appropriately to our society and in doing intersubjectivity, therefore, it is really important that we get to acquire a complete understanding of the logical fallacies. So, I have created this video to shortly discuss each of the 12 common fallacies that we may do as we interact with others. As you may already know, a logical fallacy is an error in reasoning to make one's argument appear to be true or correct. It may be intentional or unintentionally used which mislead a person into thinking, acting, or behaving in a certain way. A logical fallacy may rouse a false assumption and a bad argument. The two major categories of fallacies are the formal and the informal fallacies, wherein, in the formal category, a defect in an argument's structure or form can be seen. It is a fallacy that exemplifies invalid inference patterns. While in the informal category, a defect in an argument's content can be seen and the premises fail to provide adequate reasons for believing the truth of the conclusion. So I will discuss very briefly all the 12 common fallacies which people intentionally or unintentionally do. The first is the appeal to authority or ad vericandium. This occurs when a person insists that a claim is true simply because a valid authority or expert on the issue said it was true, without any verification or other supporting evidence offered. The logical form is presented as person 1 who is an expert on the issue of why said that why is true, therefore why is true. For example, Richard Dawkins, an evolutionary biologist and perhaps the foremost expert in the field, says that evolution is true, therefore it is true, regardless of the absence of strong evidence. The second type of fallacy is the begging the question or the circular reasoning. It is a form of argument in which the writer, instead of applying evidence, simply restates the point in other language. For example, a signage saying students should not be allowed to park in lots now reserved for faculty because lots should be for faculty only. As you can notice, there is no evidence or justification pointed out. Instead, just mere repetition of the prior statement was given. The third fallacy is the hasty generalization. It is a form of inductive fallacy which means drawing a conclusion based on too little data. For example, my brother eats a lot of pizza and fries and he is healthy. Therefore, pizza and fries are healthy food and does not make a person fat. Also, Anna has a terrible experience with a boyfriend. Thus, she concluded that all boys are mean. The next type of fallacy is the ad hominem or argument against the man or person. This is a personal attack on the character of a person rather than evaluating the argument itself. It may be an insult toward the flaws or imperfections of the other. There are four subtypes of ad hominem. The first subtype of ad hominem is the abusive. It is by undermining the credibility of the speaker to the audience, like insulting the speaker to make the audience not to believe the speaker. For example, in the argument that all murderers are criminal, but a thief isn't a murderer and so can't be a criminal, 
The abusive ad hominem argument stated, You are a murderer and also a thief, so there goes your argument. The second subtype of ad hominem is the circumstantial, which focuses on the situation surrounding the subject in order to create a doubt. For example, one claims that animals are sentient beings. If a being is sentient, then killing it for food is immoral. A circumstantial ad hominem attack would say, You are a vegan and you work for a vegan food company. That is why. The third subtype of ad hominem is the tu quoque, or the rejection of an argument by attacking it back to its source. For example, a doctor advises a patient to quit smoking because that is a serious health risk. So the patient replied, Look who's talking. You smoke too. I'll quit when you quit. The last subtype of ad hominem is the guilt by association. In this fallacy, the speaker is judged by the company they are associated with, so the speaker can be viewed as guilty too. It is with the claim, having association with wrongdoers affect the audience's decision. For example, Christy is thinking about becoming a vegetarian. She learns that many mass murderers were also vegetarian. Thus, she keeps on eating meat. Also, Amy suggested to Anna to run for president because it is beneficial. But Anna learned that Hitler was Amy's father. So, Anna decided not to run for president. Another type of logical fallacy is called appeal to ignorance or argumentum ad ignorantiam. It claims that the lack of evidence for an argument is a good reason to believe that the argument is true or false. It claims that because no one has proven it yet to be false, then it is true, and vice versa. Examine the following claims as an example. First, there must be intelligent life on other planets. No one has proven there isn't, therefore, it is true. Also, she hasn't said she doesn't like you, right? So, she's probably interested. And, no one can actually prove that God exists, therefore, God does not exist. The sixth logical fallacy is the alphabet soup. It occurs when one excessively uses acronyms and abbreviations to appear more knowledgeable in the subject to confuse others. For example, in programming CGI, a WYSIWYG interface doesn't help PHP or CSS very well. If you sign up for personal consulting, I will show you how to program effectively. By using too much jargons, one may appear to be correct, even if in reality, he is not. The seventh type of logical fallacy is the slippery slope. This is a fallacy where one small first step can lead to a chain of related events that results in something undesirable consequential happening. As an example, Look at this chain of related events, which is not logical. The eighth logical fallacy is the appeal to emotion. It is a logical fallacy that occurs when a misleading argument, and particularly one that is unsound or missing factual evidence is used with the goal of manipulating people's emotions. Look at this example. There's a young orphan, 12 years old girl in the street who was starving to death. And like anyone would do, she went into a store, grabbed some food off the shelf, went back to the alley she had been living in and started eating. Some audience will focus on the young girl's struggle and the main issue will just be neglected. 
Next is the red herring. This fallacy takes place when an irrelevant topic is presented in order to divert the audience's attention away from the original issue or argument. For example, person 1 asked, Have you finished your assignment? So person 2 responded, I was working on my assignment and then the game came on the TV. Did you watch it? As you can notice, Person 2 diverted the attention away from the question raised by Person 1. The next fallacy is called the strawman fallacy. It occurs when someone takes another person's argument or point, distorts it or exaggerated it in some kind of extreme way, and then attacks the extreme distortion as if that is the reality of the claim raised by the first person. Look at this example. Person A said, let's go to the amusement park. Person B responded, no, I'd rather not today. So person A concluded, you never want to have fun. 11. The false dilemma. It is also known as the false dichotomy or the either-or fallacy, wherein the statement falsely claim an either-or situation, when in fact, there are at least one or two more choices or options to take. Examine the following examples of false dilemma fallacy. And finally, the appeal to people fallacy or the bandwagon fallacy. It is a form of logical fallacy which argues that one must accept or reject an argument because everyone else accepts it or rejects it. For example, there are two horse racing, a black horse and a white horse. Many people are rooting for the black horse to win. Therefore, the black horse will win. Also, Katie likes to read and would rather do that than play sports. However, her friends make fun of her and tell her that reading is for nerds. So, Katie stops reading so much, instead starts to play sports more. I hope that all of the common fallacies were discussed clearly in this video. Let us avoid committing them as we deal with others in the society. Thanks for being with me again, and if you learned something from this video, do not forget to hit like and subscribe. Bye!